Hey, welcome to another episode of Not Scrum Dumb Podcast, where Scott and I give you tips and advice on how to make your scrum team and yourself as a scrum practitioner the best you can be. We are going through some job descriptions today. So every job is looking to solve a problem. So when they post a job, they're looking to solve a problem. We're going to look at some of the job descriptions, tell you what some of the common things that we're seeing, and just go through, see where you can see what some problems this organization has and you can go to your interview prepared and ready and talk about how you as their scrum master can solve those problems yes as you know andreana i've been looking for a lot of jobs here lately looking to get back on the market looking for some remote jobs want to take some time ladies and gentlemen and just go through some of the job descriptions that i've been looking at want to pose the question that would you apply for this or not or what is it telling you or what kind of things can you retrieve from some of these job titles andreana on this list do you see anything that just stands out to you that, uh, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, I think, you know, the chief scrum master is like the funny, fun one. I would love to be called the chief of something. Uh, the Jira expert one, you know, being a scrum master and being Jira admin are very different. When I worked at Nike, we literally had people that was their full-time job. And a lot of what they did was to help keep this Jira, Confluence, Atlassian Suite, up and running the latest tools that that was, yeah, I would say, that, you know, even being a business analyst and a scrum master are, are so different. So these are two different jobs. It, it looks like a lot of combination of jobs, which wasn't necessarily true when I first started out as a scrum master, but they're trying to fill a lot of gaps with one single person. That's my initial I, thoughts. I, I, wow. No, I totally agree. Uh, as y'all can see, you know, my criteria, what I'm looking for, I'm looking for all remote because I can't foresee myself going into an office. I, that's just a preference. I mean, there's all types out there, but notice I'm a bit biased. I'm looking for remote work only. And as I was going through this process, I just want to share with you some things that yeah, I see these job titles. And if you was to ask me, Scott, did you apply for this? No, I didn't apply for some of the reasons that Andreana talked about. A senior business analyst, that's one job. A scrum master is another job. And you know what? Look at the salary here from 127000 to 145000 I know some business analysts that make that just as a single title. I know some scrum masters that make that salary as a single title. So you telling me, company, that you want to basically you want me to do two things and you're only going to pay me for the price of one. Now, nah, I think of myself a bit more valuable than that. So I'm going to skip that. <laughs> I'm going to skip uh, release train engineer. Have you heard of that term before, Andriana? Release train engineer. Yeah, safe concept. Safe concept. Again, look at those salaries. And it's about now. You're looking for two roles and you're not paying me, uh, in my opinion, really just for one job. Right. Sorry to go back to that. Those are two different roles, even within the safe framework. That's the yes. funny part about this one. <laughs> Safe for those of you who don't know, that would be scaled agile framework. Safe is the acronym for that. But yeah, project manager, scrum master. That didn't surprise me, but I just wanted to share this with you and everybody else. And just like, hey, chief scrum master. I'm like, wow, that's 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 interesting. <laughs> so let's dive into a job description next and look at that and see where what kind of things can we retrieve from that to possibly see, hey, and will I apply for this or how can I prepare myself to get ready for the job description if I'm actually looking at the job description. So let's take a look at one of those. So here's a job description I was looking at. Uh, as you can see, it posts for a scrum master. I am a scrum master and those are the type of jobs that I look for. Uh, this is in Chicago. It's a contract position. Again, that's the criteria that I'm looking for. Now, here are some things I look at when I'm looking at a job description. I see something here called Azure DevOps. Now, back when I started my career five years ago, that when I was looking at job description and I saw a term that I did not recognize, I would actually go research it, go on Google and research whatever it might be. Jira. I was already using Jira because, you know, when I was making the transition, I knew Jira was the number one tool that most organizations use. The only other option out there was Verizon Rally. So I'd already had that and was practicing that in my personal life. Safe. This is what Andriana was talking about earlier. This is scaled agile framework. Again, just giving you some tips that as you're going through this this job description, if you don't know some of these terms, then go ahead and Google it, start researching it and see if that's enough to help you get the information that you need and let that take you. Waterfall methodology, if you're not familiar with that, research it. Agile, that's the space that we in. Agile methodology is the overall umbrella, whereas Scrum, what Andrean and I do, 
is up underneath that umbrella. So if you've never heard of Agile, maybe you research that. What is it? There is a manifesto out there. Never heard of that? Research it. Read it. Andrani, what are your thoughts here about the first part of this here? Anything that sticks out to you? Yeah, the other thing is you can always reach out to the recruiter and or double check in the job description if they're mandatory because this is a lot. Most people would not meet all of these. I don't know if I would personally meet all of these. I've had some experience working in SAFE. I personally don't have SAFE certifications right now, but I've worked in it. Is that good enough? I don't know. My friend went through a situation where it wasn't good enough. He needed to have that specific cert certification. Now, the other thing I was reading this sort of job description, really what's something that stuck out to me is, okay, he was looking for a scrum master. Then here we are in the job title. They switched up on it. Agile project manager. I'm like, okay, let me read on. It's not, not looking good. Ideally, the candidate should have both agile and project management skill sets. Okay. Well, project management skill sets could be useful in agile environment. Now, as I was reading these bullet points, now one of the things that really stuck out to me was monitors, measures, and report on project progress to management forward slash leadership. Now, in my mind, when I read that, I'm like, do you have a product owner? Because if we're using Scrum, then, you know, you should have a product owner talking to management leadership, basically those stakeholders within the company that are outside of the team reporting progress about the product goal. With that knowledge in my mind, I'm writing down, if I decide to apply for this job, I get an interview, that is definitely going to be a question I'm going to ask in the interview. Hey, can you get elaborate on this bullet point here? What do you mean? What does it look like for a Scrum master to report progress on the project? And then I'm going to let that conversation go go where it need to go. Andriana, you see anything here that uh, raises a question for you? Yeah, I think another question would be to understand how project focused they really are. And if they want to go to having that product mindset, which is really focused on user retention or customer retention or increasing sales and revenue, different things like that, that are actually more important than just the status of a project and be very goal driven as opposed to project driven, because I think that's really important to the success success of an organization. And that really speaks volumes to if they are genuinely taking on this agile mindset that they're asking you to drive. I love it. I mean, pretty much everything else I was okay with proficient in planning, organizing and facilitating scrum. Okay. That's, I would say that's part of our responsibilities as a scrum master, uh, project management skill set responsible for a team effectiveness. Okay. I'm cool with that. Excellent communication. I think that's applicable to any environment you're in, whether you scrum master, product owner, developer, really any environment, uh, facilitate effective focused team meetings forward slash standups. Now this would be another call lot for me. You, know, you say you're looking for a scrum master. If we're using scrum, we call our event daily scrum. You're using some different terminology that I'm not familiar with unless you are familiar with the scaled agile framework. That's what they call their events. But in scrum, we call it daily scrum. So I would raise that flag. I say, okay, in your environment, you say, are you doing scrum? If I'm in an interview, are you doing scrum? Uh, yes, we're doing scrum. Why do you call them daily stand-ups? And I actually correct them in the interview. I said, well, if I'm a scrum master, you know, I do daily scrums. I don't do daily stand-ups. Oh, well, we, well, this, see, that might be a deal breaker for me because if, if you say you're doing something and if you don't want to use it as intended, then I will have a problem with that because I'm a scrum master and I'm thinking about embodying the value of respect. I'm not going to disrespect the scrum guy and say, okay, well, for you, I will dilute what I stand for. So I'm not going to do that in my opinion. Anything for you, Andrana, in this here list of project management skill set? Yeah, I think the big thing to ask in the interview view is do you have the autonomy to drive the changes that we're mentioning? Do you have the autonomy to change it from stand-ups to daily scrum to actually drive the team effectiveness? It talks about in the products and solutions delivery, but yet it still wants you to do traditional project management. So it's that hybrid of like scrum master, we're res responsible for the team effectiveness. But if you're going to weigh the scrum master down with project management tasks or being a task manager or driving things that to report instead of to produce a valuable product, then this is a red flag. If not, take the job because there's like, there seems to be a couple interesting things on how you can help coach the organization, how you can help coach management and the scrum team. Well, I love that perspective. Very beautiful. All right. Very briefly on qualifications, bachelor's degree, computer science, information technology, related discipline. Okay. 
Andrana, you've been talking about this for quite a few videos, software development lifecycle. You have to know that as a bare minimum. And we put that in. What do you need to know as a scrum master to get higher video? Software development lifecycle is there. So again, this is a way that you can look at the a job description and kind of say, hey, is this something for me? Do I feel comfortable in this environment for some of the things that Andreana said? And also it's a way for you to bridge your gaps of knowledge and understanding. If there's something on this job description that you don't know, I think there's something valuable that you can get out of this, whether you're applying for the job or not. Andriana. Yeah, a couple other things with the software development life cycle. In that video we talked about, because we get this question quite often where people are wondering, should do they need technical experience? This is the type of technical knowledge that you need. And now you have proof in the actual job description that you need, that I wasn't just <laughs> making this up. So here you go. But I, I, I do think now people are asking for a wider range of knowledge. So experience with uh, Scrum, Kanban, and SAFE. Fortunately, throughout my career, I've been able to touch a little bit of that. And I think you have as well, Scott. But that is a challenging part. So if you don't necessarily have Kanban and SAFE, again, these are things and we talked about the DevOps. These are things that you can discuss with the recruiter because maybe the, the Scrum team isn't even doing that. And they just put that on the job description because they've seen other job descriptions have that. And these are also things that you can learn throughout your, pro your the process. So if you're like, I don't have experience with Jira. That's okay. I believe they may offer free accounts. There are plenty of tutorials on YouTube. Let them know that you're a fast learner. And there you go. Now you're able to go in without necessarily every aspect, because like I said, I don't even know if I qualify for every single aspect on the job description. Me either. I don't for sure. <laughs> yeah. Most of my experiences with AWS. So that automatically crosses it out and you don't have to, I don't see how that's relevant to being a scrum master. Now, do I need to understand how they deliver value? Absolutely. I don't need to have all this experience with that piece of software to understand that basic concept. Totally agree. Very well said. If you stuck around to the end of this video, that means you have an attention span greater than a goldfish. Check out some of our previous videos to get more awesome content from us. You can also connect with us via LinkedIn and you can check out any of our courses and more content in the description.